if you haven't seen this before, uh, there's a series that I have of building this cabin. I've been building it for the last year, just kind of on weekends and just for uh, just for fun. And but it's going to serve as a as a place for guests to sleep. I'll be here a little bit. Uh, I can see when my kids come to visit, they'll want to stay here. And uh, that's really what it's for. Um, I've, it's not perfect. <laughs> I'm not a professional, but I, I've muddled through well enough. And uh, you can you can watch the whole series if you want. Uh, it's available uh, as a as a as a playlist. So power in this cabin. It's as 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 I said, it's off grid, and it's a dry cabin, so I don't have a huge power requirements here, but I do have some. I want lighting, um, obviously heat, and the heat for this cabin comes in the form of a diesel heater uh, that's mounted on the outside of the cabin, but it requires 12 volts. So what I've done is I've is I've come up with this. <laughs> Well, it looks a little crazy at this point, but it, it's a it's a 12 volt distribution system for the cabin. So most everything in here is, is 12 volt. And this box here is actually a 12 volt power supply. And the concept there is I can just plug that in to any 110 outlet and it'll power everything in the cabin. I also have regular 110 plugs uh, around the cabin as well that plug in. So one single plug, can run all of this. All I do is I plug in my 12 volt power supply into the plug and I've got 12 volts and 110. And the 12 volts run, right now it's really just the lights and the diesel heater. Uh, there are, there's a loft in the cabin and up there there's little lights with USB so people want to charge their phones overnight if they're staying in it overnight, that type of thing. So that's what it is. The problem is that when you are running out, running 110 from your power stations, there is an overhead. So the example given, like this is a 1,024 watt hour power station. I have the extra battery down below it, which is which doubles that in in, a, in effect. But just sitting and idling with the inverter on, the 110 volt inverter on. The, this will use 284 watt hours a day with nothing else running but the inverter. So the inverter itself runs, takes 240, 284 watt hours a day. There, I'll leave a link here to a video, a really good video kind of explaining this whole, why that is and, and what the different power stations take. Different power stations have different overheads on their inverters. Some are more efficient than others. EcoFlows are actually quite good. And this one this is the Delta II, and it's, it's quite good. Uh, some of the other EcoFlows are not nearly as good when it comes to efficiency, but these are okay. But 284, I mean, that's really, if I didn't have the extra battery, that's all, you know, that's 25% of its capacity just to run the inverter. So to get around that, you can run just 12 volts. Um, and I have a, I have a trick for that. So. Let me explain my system here a little bit. The plug you see up here actually goes to a cord that's outside that I could plug into a generator if I need uh, generator power. And if I wanted to use the generator to charge up the EcoFlow because the solar wasn't working. There's a solar panel outside, a 200 watt panel that's plugged into this thing that basically this time of year keeps it charged quite well. In the wintertime, that's not gonna happen. This place is mostly in shadow or completely in shadow at the end of December and January it really doesn't get very much solar at all. This time of year, it's not a problem. It gets lots of solar uh, for the occasional use stuff and, and, and works fine. But uh, there are times when, uh, when I need to run off, you know, generator or I'm running. So that's why the, the power supply. The other reason for the power supply is because I have a diesel heater. Diesel heater, when it's running, only takes 30, 35 watts, something like that. To start the diesel heater, it takes 140, 120 to 140 watts. And it only do, does that for a couple of minutes because there's a blow, glow plug. When you start a heater, a glow plug lights up and ignites the diesel. Uh, it only lasts for a couple of minutes, but that's there. The lighting that I have 
probably takes uh, 30, 36, well, I think it's under 30 watts total right now. But I mean, that can change too then in the future. So the caveat here is most power stations will have a 12 volt, it's a commonly called a cigarette later plug, but it's a 12 volt accessory plug. They are usually limited to 10 amps. So 10 amps times 12 volts is 120 watts. That's usually where they're going to max out. Some of them will go a little more than that. This one will go a little more, but not much. And then it, it throws you into error. Uh, it, the protection circuits stop that from going anymore. Mostly, generally speaking, lighter plugs are limited to 10 amps, even in your car. Uh, so those are, those are generally 10 amp, 120 watt is, is kind of the max that you're ever going to get out of one. So usually though, if I'm running a diesel heater, I don't have anything on right now, but if I'm running a diesel heater and the lights, when they're running, I, I'm at like 50 to 60 watts. And that's what my power usage is. Uh, so the lighter plug can handle that. The lighter plug can also handle starting the diesel heater if there's no other load on that 12 volt system. So that is kind of the caveat here. If I'm going to run 12 volts out of here to run everything, then I can start the heater as long as I shut off all the lights. So I kind of have to remember that. The way my system runs, there's a 12 volt power supply here that plugs into 110. A 12 volt comes over here to this odd looking switch, which is a, which is something I got off Timu. I got a pack of six of them or something like that. It was, they were extremely cheap, but they're kind of cool. And you absolutely know if they're on or off. You absolutely know if they're connected or not. So that would be a completely disconnected state when it's, when it's up like that. There's my 12 volt distribution block. Red for positive, black for negative, obviously. That's a um, solar panel charge controller. Not hooked up at the moment. If and when I get actual 12 volt batteries in here, then this will come into play and the solar will run the batteries and the batteries will stay here. For the moment though, I'm using the EcoFlow. When I need 110 is when I'm doing things like running the air compressor as for some of the work I'm doing here, a vacuum cleaner. Uh, there may be stuff down the road. I don't know where this is gonna go, but I built it so that it can do anything I need to in the future without really planning everything out. Uh, so that was, that was kind of the plan. But basically speaking, I plug one plug into this power station and then that is hooked up to all of the 110. And then if I plug my 12 volt power supply into the wall, then I've got power for everything. But like I said, I don't need to do that all the time. So what I've been trying to do, and it seems to be quite effective, is I have a lighter plug, and I don't even remember what I got it from. Um, it came with something, and it was, and it came with the these connectors, and then I had these other connectors, so alligator clips. So by hooking up these clips to my distribution block, red on red, black on black, pretty simple. Turn on my 12 volt, on just, just the 12 volt, so the AC is not on. And I've got my 12 volt system without running the overhead of both the power supply and the inverter. So it saves a lot of power. Uh, it saves a lot of watt hours by, by doing it that way. If all I need is the 12 volt. Like I said, if I need to start the heater though, I would need to just shut off the lights, start the heater, wait till that's running, and then uh, I can turn on the lights and it would be no problem. So as you can see, I'm running 19 watts worth of lighting at the moment. I'll turn on some other lights so see what that does. So 25 watts, and that I'm not running the inverter. I'm going to turn on the inverter. And if I plug in my uh, 
plug in my 12 volt power supply you can see it's gone up slightly but what you don't see there it doesn't show you it's only showing you what it's outputting at the outlets it doesn't show you what the actual overhead of the inverter is and that's a little bit deceiving you can't tell just because I turned on the inverter that uh, it's actually taking some power there and which would amount to 284 watt hours a day so it's really kind of like 10 watts 10 to 12 watts um, that that would take doesn't show up in the on the front reading thing I'm gonna unplug my uh, my 12 volt power supply. The other thing about running that 12 volt power supply, there's a fan that runs constantly, and so there's a little bit of noise out of that. It's not that bad, but it is something that's there. It's not that cold in here right now. I'm going to turn off the light zone. I'm going to turn on the heater just so we can see what happens there. So now we're at zero watts because nothing is pulling anything. Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay with the with the kick on, but you can see what happens with this diesel heater. So this is nothing but a diesel heater running on the 12 volt system on the startup. Twenty-five, twenty-eight watts. That's what they actually take out of twelve volt. Now, if I was running this through the uh, twelve volt power supply that would be hooked into one ten, that adds about another, you know, ten watts or something like that. So you'd be looking at thirty watts. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it all adds up in a small solar system. But now that I'm at thirty watts, I can turn on the lights again. You can see I've jumped to 58. The other thing that I find myself doing while I'm building this cabin is charging batteries. So I'm going to turn on my AC, plug in my battery charger. And start charging the battery. You can see what that does to the power consumption. So that's put us at, uh, well, we're using about 100 watts now, and that's running all the lights, running the diesel heater, and charging the battery. So moral of the story, if you don't need 110 volts, don't run it. Run out of your 12 volt system. These aren't 12 volt batteries internally. I think they're like a 52 volt or something like that. So there's there's circuitry to get them 12 volts. So it's not just like the letter plugs hooked directly up to a 12 volt battery like you might have otherwise. Um, that's that's a, that's a different kind of circuit that makes that happen. Uh, which is why the limitations are on the 12 volts on these. I really wish one of the things power station manufacturers might consider in the future is is upping the, the 12 volt output on power stations, uh, making it either having more than one or, or just making a, a different type of connector that would have a, a much higher amperage. I find that's lacking in just about all the ones that I've looked at, um, and it would make life a lot simpler if they just did that. But I understand that the, the main, the main uh, purpose of these things is to actually put out 110 uh, to, uh, for everything else that you want to run. Typically, if you're you know running refrigerators or anything, any of the AC stuff. If you don't need to run AC, don't. But um, it will save you, like I said, you know, it's probably 10, 20, 25% of the watt hours in, in your battery. They might advertise it as a 10,000 watt hour battery or something like that, but you don't get 1,000 watt hours because you have to run your inverter as well. So that was my... My revelation and, and one of the things that and how I how I can get around it. 
in the future I'll come up with something better than these alligator clips sticking out of the wall. That's just probably not going to be good. I'm obviously not finished this yet, um, but uh, when I get to a finished product, I'll, I'll have a I'll have a full tour. So subscribe if you hasn't if you if you want to get notifications of me building more of this cabin.